What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today I'm starting a new series for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I've been thinking about doing this for a while. This is going to be a crash course series where I talk about all the basics of a certain aspect of your device. Today I'm gonna to be talking about home screen settings, which means all those things there at the bottom, but particularly today, we're gonna to focus on the settings on the far right. I'll talk about what some of these other things do, but I probably will make a crash course video on widgets and some of the other things in particular as well. Now, I wanna start off by saying that this is not a video for people who are advanced users of Samsung or Android devices. That way people aren't disappointed and say that I clickbaited them into watching something. This is for people who are new to Samsung or wanna learn more about their phone and don't feel like they have a great grasp of everything it's capable of doing. Uh, before we get started, I'll remind you guys, we do have a giveaway that just started today, the first day of April. We're gonna be giving away a flagship device once again, me and Shane Starnes. I'll drop the link below if you're interested. So let's take a look at those home screen settings. First of all, how do you access home screen settings? You just long press on your home screen, just press down. And let's talk about the settings here on the far right. I kind of want to go through all of them and tell you what they do so that if you haven't used any of them, you want to know what they do, uh, you can modify them and play around. So home screen layout, what this does is it basically makes it so that you either have home and app screens like an app drawer or home screen only. If you turn on home screen only, this is gonna look more like an iPhone. So all of your icons will be on all of your various home screens and you'll have to like swipe over and over and over if you have a bunch of apps to get to them. Um, I much prefer home screen and app drawer, but that's because I'm a Samsung Android longtime user and we tend to prefer what we know and that's what's been there. But if you've come from an iPhone, maybe that's something that you would be interested in is the home screen only. Here you can change your grid, um, which means how many apps you have. So here I've got five by six, which you can very clearly see here, five icons across, six up. But of course I do have a widget there, which is taking up some of the space. Uh, you can go all the way up to five by six uh, for your home screen if you wanna fit a whole lot of apps on there. I really only keep the bottom row of apps on my home screen to keep it looking clean. So I don't really need a whole lot of rows and columns. Add a media page to the home screen. So that's when you swipe over from the home screen. You've got your media page. Uh, the default there is indeed Google Discover. You can also turn on Samsung Free. I would highly recommend not doing that. Google Discover is much better for curating news and stories, products that you'd be interested in. So I would recommend doing that for sure. Um, show app screen button on the home screen. If you turn this on, it's gonna turn the app drawer button back down here on like we had on old school Android. I personally don't see a need for it because you already have uh, oops, you already have the swipe up gesture to get into the app drawer, but if you like seeing that old school Android look where we had the app drawer button, um, you can put that there. I didn't know how I was gonna live without the app drawer button when we first started doing gestures, but now it's just second nature. Uh, lock home screen layout. This is where it will automatically lock it so that items won't move around. This is a good one to enable if you use good lock or theme park, which I've talked about in videos before, because when you apply some of your icons, some of them can move around uh, and in this case, it looks like my Google chat icon somehow got, I don't know. You see like there, you can't now, you can't drag. See like your Google chat, if you wanna now drag something to the home screen, it won't let you change it. So if you go back, settings, turn off lock screen layout. Now, if you take an app like chat, you can put this down here, for instance, and, and now you'll have your, you know, your icon at the bottom. But if you turn that on, it's gonna lock it and uh, it won't edit, you know, you won't have things move around. It actually is a good idea to leave this turned on, I think, if you do use Theme Park, because sometimes when you change the icon packs, it tends to shift around the icons I've noticed, which I think is a bug, but it's a decent idea. Uh, hide apps, what this does is it hides apps in your app drawer. So one good reason you might wanna do this is if you have two messaging apps, like I have the Google Messages and Samsung Messages, you can hide the one that you don't use, for instance. Uh, if you have a lot of apps that are like Samsung apps that you don't use or apps that you only use sparingly, you might wanna hide them. Sometimes I hide things like my icon packs if I'm not planning to look through them for wallpapers and things like that, just because I don't use them that often. It is a good way to clean up your app drawer. Uh, once you hide them, of course, then they won't appear over here anymore. You'll see now I only have, well, I didn't save it, of course. I say that, tell you to do it, and then I don't save it. Uh, once you do choose something to hide inside here, you got to click done. And then once you do that, you're only going to have the one message icon in your drawer. 
Uh, going back in here to settings, app icon badges. This will allow you to show if you have uh, a notification in a particular app, it either shows you the number or a dot. Uh, you can also get notifications on the app icons, which actually touch and hold the app icon to show notifications. This is a really nice feature. So like if I'm in Outlook, for instance, I have a notification in there, I can hold it and it'll actually show me the email that I have right there. That's pretty cool, especially if you're doing social media. I like that feature. In fact, I didn't even realize I didn't have it turned on. It's something I usually turn on. Swipe down the notification panel. This will allow you to swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get your notifications, not just at the top, which is great because of the large size of the S22 Ultra. I definitely recommend keeping that one on. Uh, rotate to landscape mode. The Galaxy S22 Ultra actually doesn't rotate to landscape mode by default. You have to turn this on if you want it to rotate to landscape mode on the home screen. Uh, this, of course, you have to have auto rotate on, of course, first, which I didn't have. But if you have auto rotate on, then it'll rotate into landscape mode with your widgets and icons and everything adjusted appropriately. So I like leaving that on because obviously if I have the phone sitting on a dock or something on my desk and it's in landscape to watch videos, I also want my navigation and stuff to be in landscape as well. So those are all the main settings, kind of the crash course. Hopefully it was a good overview. The other three icons, which I'm gonna get into more details later, I think there's a lot to talk about in here. Widgets, which is a deep topic that I'll make a, another video on. You can add all kinds of stuff like calendars, this widget I have here with the time, my schedule, battery percentage, some really advanced stuff if you have pro widget, widget packs. Themes takes you to the Samsung theme store, which I've talked about before as well, but there's a lot of these that I really do like. You can also change your fonts, and uh, I plan to make another video, which might be a couple part video on themes. And then the last setting, of course, is wallpaper and style. Uh, this one, there isn't a whole lot to say other than you can either get wallpapers you've got from the Galaxy Store, ones you saved in your gallery, lock screen wallpapers, which of course I have the dynamic one, which a lot of people like, change your color palette, which is an Android 12 feature, and you can apply that palette to your app icons if you want as well. I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't leave it on. And you can also apply dark mode to wallpaper if you have dark mode on. I don't like that either because it makes my tent look, it makes the tent on the wallpaper look a little weird. Uh, but if anyone's interested in my lock screen wallpaper, this is it right here. This is colorful ink. It's from the Galaxy Store. Anyway, that's an overview of the settings I, uh, that you'll find when you do long press on the home screen, um, mainly detailing the settings for your home screen in general. And then I will delve into these further in another video. If you guys are interested, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know some other ideas for what you want to see in these tutorials. I've done tons of S22 Ultra stuff. I got a lot more ideas coming up very soon. Giveaway link below. Also, still using the Moss case. That's linked below if anyone's interested, along with some of my other favorite cases and uh, the stuff that I have for my theme, if you're interested in the theme that I have here. Appreciate you guys checking it out, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.